Well, greetings and salutations, test takers. This is Dean Tenney, the Series 7 Guru, coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas with an explication request. The best free supplement to your paid study materials is my YouTube channel. But if you don't have a Kaplan Q Bank, I highly recommend it as a paid supplement with my 15% uh, discount code, Guru15, at checkout. It can be yours for as little as $55.80. Uh, for that commercial, Kaplan allows me to give you a free look on Kaplan content like this. I'll help you with any question from any test prep vendor. It's just easier if it's a Kaplan question because you can send me the QID and I can bring it up uh, backstage. All right, let's get busy on this uh, request. An investor purchased 20 XYZ Corporation 6% convertible bonds at 97% to par the mature in 20 years. So I think the first thing I've got to say is, okay, uh, it looks like my cost basis on the bonds is a 970. The bonds are convertible into 40 shares. Now, usually on the test, they give you the conversion price and not the conversion ratio. So here I say, oh, okay, well, cool. Thank you so much. They're telling me I can get 40 shares if I convert. Uh, however, three years after the purchase, okay, so I've held this now for more than a year. Uh, that's important. You know, my holding period, if I decide to convert, is based on when I bought the bond. Who knows, may or may not be important. The corporation declared a 20% stock dividend. Hey, uh, by the way, it doesn't matter that it's at 105, but again, in the trust indenture, there's an anti-dilutive clause and what I'm saying here as a bondholder is I want to be able to convert into the same proportioned ownership. And so now I'm going to adjust the conversion ratio accordingly. So a 20% stock dividend, I want my convertible features to be adjusted accordingly so that I can convert into the same proportion ownership. So my original conversion ratio was 40, 20%. That means I want eight additional shares. My new conversion uh, ratio is 48 shares. Now, if I want to do the conversion price, I don't know why I would, but you know, I could uh, take 1,000, divide by 48, and that would give me the new conversion price. All right, let's see what happens next. Uh, then six months later, so who cares? We're, you know, we're three years, six months, you know, doesn't matter at this point. The investor decided to convert the bonds when they were trading at 104. So it's 1,040 into the stock and sell the common shares where we're trading at parity. Uh, parity calculations uh, is very testable. You can't be fumbling around with how to do parity. Parity means equal. In other words, if I buy the bond, if I convert the stock into the stock at 104, what have I paid for the stock is basically what that means, the equivalent, right, parity. The way we get parity on stock is to take the current market price of the convertible and divide by the number of shares it's convertible into. All right, what was the capital gain or loss and the conversion price of the shares? Okay, so if we uh, converted the bonds at 104, the reason we need to own 104 is because they're saying we sold to parity. So I have to solve for parity to figure out what my sales proceeds are. So here I take 1,040, current market price of the convertible. I divide by the conversion ratio. I get parity of the common. By the way, that alone is a, a test question. You should be able to do that on the test. Usually that would be uh, the question. You know, there's a convertible bond. It's trading at 1,040. It's convertible X number of shares. What is parity? For us, it's an intermediate step because remember, we're trying to solve uh, for what is my gain or loss here. So remember my original cost base now. I say, okay, well, I paid 970 uh, for that uh, bond. It was convertible and said I converted and I converted into 48 shares. So my uh, cost base there is 2021. The 970 that I paid for the bond, I convert. And so now I'm in business. I've got my sales proceeds, which is 2167. I have my cost basis of 2021. And so it looks like I made $1.46 uh, per share. And so now it says, what is the capital gain or loss? So now I say, okay, I made $1.46 per share. And then boom, I have 20 bonds that are convertible into 48 shares. So we're talking about 960 shares. So I made uh, $1.46 on 960 shares. 
I have a long-term gain. That is the answer to the first part of the question of $1,400. And then remember, to get the conversion price, the adjusted conversion price, I just take the 1,000 par, because yeah, that's where those conversion terms are based on, divide by 48, and I get the adjusted conversion price of 2083. So the answer to the question is, what is the capital gain? It's $1,400 long-term. What is the conversion price, uh, an adjusted conversion price? Uh, 2083. So I hope that was helpful. Let's just review real quick. We'll do the reset here. Boom. Okay, here we go. An right, investor purchased 20 XYZ Corporation 6% convertible bonds at 97. That's $970. The bonds are convertible into 40 shares. They declared a 20% stock dividend. So the adjusted conversion ratio is 48 shares, 20% times 40. It says six months later, they convert the bonds and the stock is selling at parity. So we had to calculate parity. We took the current market price of the convertible. We divide by the conversion ratio to get parity of the common. That is very testable, that formula. It says, uh, what is our capital gain or loss? We paid $970, which got us 48 shares per bond. So our cost basis is 2021. We have sales proceeds of 2167. So we made $1.46. We have 20 bonds that are convertible to 48, uh, 48 shares. That's 960. So we made uh, uh, 960 shares. We made $1.46. That's a $1,400 long-term capital gain. And our adjusted conversion price based on that 20% stock dividend was par divided by the conversion ratio, which gave us the conversion price. Okay, so remember, inch by inch, your Series 7 is a cinch, yard by yard, your Series 7 is hard. And I will see you for the next explication request.